Hi guys, so I'm gonna do a get ready with me today and I'm gonna do a just really polishing my face up like as if I were to go to work after this or like if I have a special event or um, I've gotten a few people requesting to see, you know, just like a good like men's makeup routine or just like how to just make you look as polished as possible without adding a lot of color. So I've already cleansed my face and I shaved. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, and I do this every single time that I shave, which is most mornings, I take Paula's Choice Skin Perfecting 2% DHA liquid, and this goes everywhere that I shaved, which, um, and, and I concentrate on the areas where I would tend to get clogged or bumps or burn or irritation. So that's always going to be on my chin for me. Um, I also can tend to get a little clogging on my upper lip and then I take my remainder over the rest of my face onto my neck and a touch on my forehead. Um, this is also great to do in the morning uh, if you have larger pores or very visible pores because this will help to kind of unclog those and your pores will get back to normal size. But for me this is like a godsend as far as preventing and groans or burn or bumps or anything like that from shaving and I like I kid you not when I say that I use it every single time that I shave which is most mornings so um, but I still have like at least half left I'm perfectly fine on that and I'll tell you a little secret too it's kind of gross but I kind of put a little bit inside my ears because I can get like blackheads and stuff in there which sounds really gross but I um, put it inside my ears and I put a little behind my ears too. Um, I don't know if they would recommend doing that but I do it anyway so. Um, and then I like to spritz my skin with a little something afterwards so I'm going to use Jordan Samuel Skins. Um, what are you waiting for? This is just a bunch of floral um, waters essentially and that's going to help to kind of helps calm the skin down a little bit. It's just a nice like little refreshing boost um, and it's a nice little addition of glow, which we can always use a little bit more of, right? Every single one of us, let's be honest. Um, the serum I'm going to use, um, I went ahead and just grabbed a few things just because my skincare is over on this dresser to the right of me. Um, well, your left, I guess. Um, so I went ahead and just grabbed a few things, but I'm going to use Kate Somerville's um, Mega C Dual Radiance Serum. I usually use my vitamin C products during the daytime. There's no reason you can't use them at night. But uh, for me, I kind of want them on in the daytime for some glow. And also, like, for me, I use my BHA products during the day because I always shave in the morning. What I usually actually do is if I'm using an electric razor, I'll shave before I even get in the shower or get my face wet when I wash it or anything like that. Just because my skin tends to be a little drier in the morning because my skin is is dry. So when I have drier skin, it helps the electric razor glide over the skin a lot better. Um, and there's no tugging and there's less risk for me when I do it with like a drier face to get like ingrowns or burn or irritation if then if I were to do it where my skin has a little bit of moisture on it. Um, but if I'm doing like regular ra uh, razor shaving with shaving cream and that sort of thing then I'll do it after I'm out of the shower. So there's a little bit of that. I need eye cream this morning that's for sure. I'm going to be reaching a lot for stuff, so just be prepared. I'm going to use some Sunday Riley Start Over because this is truly... Now I do feel like when you massage it in, it really helps get the circulation going. So I'm not putting a lot of pressure, but I'm really just massaging the skin and I'm not... You okay? Um, I'm not tugging a lot. I'm really just putting a little bit of pressure here and smoothing the product in and that's going to really help get. See? Brighter face instantly. Look at that. I guess. Let's see. I want to use a bit of oil too. Yeah, I have a little sample size of this Kate Somerville Dilo, Dilo oil. Dilo. I'm just gonna do, that maybe isn't supposed to happen. Anyway, I'm just gonna do a few drops of that. 
just a touch. And because of this lighter hair now, I usually take whatever oil I have left over on my hands and put it in my hair. If you're hearing some clinking, my dogs are scratching and their collars are... Mm, smells of coconut. I don't know, I find doing just a very thin layer of oil, especially during summertime, just helps my skin to stay a little bit more balanced because I guess my skin's not having to produce as much oil from the sun dehydrating it. At least in my experience. Okay, and then funny enough, I'm gonna go in with a balancing moisturizer from Amora Vicha. Amora Amoravitsa. Amoravitsa? I don't know how you say it. Oh, okay. Now, depending on the occasion, if I know there's going to be pictures taken, then I'll use foundations that I know photograph really well. Things like Armani Luminous Silk. Um, Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua photographs nicely. Um, uh, NARS Radiant Cream Compact photographs nicely. Uh, so does the Sheer Glow. Is it pilling up on my face though? I can't tell. Okay, so that's actually nice and balanced on my skin now. Um, I know I'm not being photographed today, so I can totally go in and use whatever I want. So I, I would use typically like my Armani CC cream I reach for a lot, Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua. Um, it depends on the time of year and the look that I'm going for. So I actually have to like get up and get the product that I'm going to use. So I just hold the phone as I shake the camera. So here we go, I've got some products. I am going to use a little primer just because I want to. And this is an extra boost of SPF, so that's good. Even though I'm going to be inside most of the day. This is Chanel uh, LeBlanc Light Revealing Makeup Base. This is the number 20 Mimosa, which you can, of course, only get in Asia, so that's fun. But the 20, or the 10 Rose, 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 is available in the U.S., and that's a good color if you have fair skin. So... fair skin and you don't mind a pink glow. This actually doesn't change the skin tone really very much at all. And you don't need a primer um, if your skin is fine without it. Uh, for some people, they need an oil control primer plus an oil control foundation. But then they're good if they do. Some people need like a hydrating primer. I just like to throw them on sometimes just because I feel like it helps to make the skin look even smoother like even before you go on with your makeup just because it does have silicone in it oftentimes and I think this one the Chanel one has um, some powders in it as well to just smooth the skin out so there's a bit of that now I have not used this foundation in a while, so I don't actually know what color I'm going to be, so I grabbed two. I have, it's the Hourglass Veil Fluid, which is such a great foundation before I drop it. I have number zero and number 1.5. I think I'm pretty much just going to be a 1.5 as of right now, but I will just do a little test. Actually mixing the number zero with the 1.5 and hopefully we'll end up with a color that is pretty much my face. Rightio, so I'm gonna use my BYS foundation brush, pretty much my favorite thing in the world, and I'm just gonna have to hold my mirror like this. So I don't like a lot of coverage. 
So that's usually why I use thinner coverage products and just use them regularly rather than a thicker coverage product or a heavier coverage product sheared out. Just because I feel like it's much more work. And I tend to be pretty heavy handed too. So I, you know, out of sheer laziness and I don't know, you can't really overdo a thinner coverage foundation for the most part. There's some of them you absolutely can, but for the most part it's, it's, it's trickier too to do that. So, and I love this foundation brush because you can apply and then kind of almost buff at the same time, but I like the flat shape of it because it allows you to get around the eyes, you know, easily. I don't even know if this color is gonna work for me. We'll pray that it does. For me, I get a little redness underneath my chin even when I use my BHA. So I put a little bit there as well. talk about how tiny this mirror is, this is what I'm having to work with for the time being. Because my good um, Botlight mirror is in New York in a storage unit somewhere until I get back. Radio. So that's applied. Now I like to go in and just give it a little blend afterwards regardless of the brush. I'm gonna use an hourglass number two because I had one handy, but any buffing brush will be fine. But I like to make sure that I buff over it, especially anything that's like silicone based or thicker in general as far as like coverage goes or texture. I mean like higher coverage or thicker texture. Just because I want everything completely seamless and as thin of a layer as possible that way it doesn't look like makeup at all. I, I never really have anyone say to me, oh my god, your makeup looks so good. It's always your skin looks good because I really work hard to make the makeup look as imperceivable as possible while still creating impact. You know, obviously we want people to know that we look good and we want to take the time to do the makeup, but then if I have a little bit left over, I will just go in just, you know, apply a little bit more in areas where I want to do a touch more coverage. Now when I'm not talking, I can totally get this done in, you know, three seconds flat, basically, you know. I mean, not really, but, you know. Um, it doesn't take me as long. But since I'm talking you through it, it's going to seem like it's a longer video. Usually what takes the most time is trying to figure out what product I want to use, you know, based on the occasion or the, the location or whatever. Like if I'm going to be outside all day, I'll use a higher coverage SPF foundation or a really long wearing one. If I'm going to be indoors and it's cold, then I'll use like a really moisturizing foundation. So it just depends. And I think it's important, I think for most people who wear face makeup, it's important to have more than one foundation. Because you never know, just like it's it's important to have more than one skincare product per category, you know? You never know what your skin is going to be doing, what the weather's going to be like, you know? Of course your face can change seasonally, you know, as far as getting dry during the winter and getting oilier during the summer, but you never know. It could be like, I don't know. Even if you're outside in the winter, you're still going to be exposed to sun, so... Um, Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna go get concealer. See, this is why I need to be back in New York, like with a desk set up with my makeup in a desk, in front of a window so I'm not having to like use desk lamps as lighting. Um, soon enough, I believe soon enough. So I would do my concealing if it's just underneath my eyes. If it's on my face, then I'll usually do everything else first and then go about it. So this is my YSL Touche Clot.
You can use your fingers, but I just don't really want to at the moment, so I'm not going to. Nah. I'm a little tired. I think I'm just, just as long as you're not like buffing the Touche Claude in, you're just kind of pressing it in. I think it's fine to just use a brush. And that's why I like this brush too. It's not super dense, so it doesn't like drink up all the product. Right, so I'm actually gonna do the makeup for you that I do like when I wanna look a little extra good. Because there's like some days where I wanna look like I'm really trying hard. Um, so I'm going to use Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. This is like my special occasion product. Um, I don't use this on a regular basis. I like to save it. And you know, so what I'm gonna do, here we have it, I'm gonna take my e.l.f. Studio Blush Brush, and then I'm going to very gently, I don't wanna do an extreme sculpt. I never do an extreme contoured look, and I cannot wait for the day where this whole contouring nonsense goes out the window and never comes back. Just like, I don't know, over powdering the skin like that was done in the 90s. Remember that, how everyone was just like, I mean the quality of powder wasn't as good back then either, but this whole like heavily powdered look has kind of gone out of style and I hope that's what happens with contouring too because I've just had it up to here with this like drag contouring because it doesn't flatter anyone and drag queens do it to make themselves look more animated and to dramatize the fact that it's not a woman under all that. They do it as a way of exaggeration. So I don't know when women decided that it was a good look. Because drag queens are performers. They're artists nonetheless, but they are performers. They're under hot stage lights where they're washed out, so they kind of need to do it. Anyway, I digress. But I do this Tom Ford shade and illuminate when I want a very gentle sculpt. If because the color is not that great. It's really not as gray as I would like it to be. Now my my favorite sculpting product in the whole world. I th I believe it's discontinued and I think the cl a close second is something from like the Laura Mercier contouring palette or the Cover Effects Cover Effects does really good colors. Um, it, this is MAC Pro Sculpting Cream and Coffee Walnut. As you can tell, this is well loved. This is super gray. So when you compare that to the Tom Ford, you can see it's much more gray. So it looks much more like a shadow, but I want to do that and save that for when I really want to have like a very well-defined face that still doesn't look extreme in the contouring and it doesn't look like I've contoured my face, but it just is a little bit more intense than this. So that just adds a touch of shape. And then I always go in with like a really thin, wimpy foundation brush to do the highlighter. So like the e.l.f. $1 one or the MAC 190. Compared to the BUYS one, it's much more thin and flimsy. So I like it for this, the highlighting product. It's, it's almost like, I mean, this Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate brush is almost like a very thin, flat foundation brush. I just haven't picked that up. Because first of all, Tom Ford brushes are expensive. They're high quality, but I mean, I have other brushes that work just fine that will do the same thing. Um, but I love a flat, thin foundation brush for that. Um, so, just because you're really smoothing the product on. And that just gives you a gorgeous glow. It's my favorite highlighter in the world. I mean, I love Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector, but this is the only highlighter that I have that doesn't excessively accentuate the fact that I have ice pick scarring along here on my upper cheekbones, which is skin that looks sort of spongy. Like, it has these tiny little holes in it. When you look at it from far away, it looks fine, but when you get up close, you can really see all the texture, and anything shimmery will just sink into there and just accentuate that, because it is catching and bringing the light towards it. So. Um, I usually avoid shimmery highlighters, but I can use the Tom Ford one with no problem whatsoever. Um, now, what do I want to do? Maybe a little bit of bronzer. Just a touch. Why not, right? Chanel um, Soleil Tan. And you have to have this brush with it. That's what I figured out. The Sonia Kashuk number 16, the Kashuk Tools. This is just my favorite brush for this product. And I'm 
I'm tapping off the excess on the back of my hand and I'm just gently like kind of floating the product over the area. Now for me, because this center of my forehead or in between my eyebrows is always lighter than my face, like I haven't done any actual highlighting here, my face is just naturally lighter in that area, I guess by my bone structure, I like to do a touch of bronzer there just to even out the tone so I don't look so highlighted, um, just because that can be a dead giveaway that you've got makeup on. And that's another reason why I like the Tom Ford highlighter and contour is they are not excessively pigmented products on their own, so it's a little harder to overdo it and therefore you won't look so made up. Um, especially if you are a man and don't want to look like you're wearing makeup, um, those are good products for sure. Next we have a touch of powder, I'm going to use Hourglass Dim Light, which is like my go-to for really just wanting to polish out the skin. And I don't do a lot. I just really do it in the center. And I try to keep those areas that we highlighted pretty clear and free from powder, just because, I mean, we put highlighter there for a reason. Then, brows. Always brows. For me, that's just something that I have to do. Um, so I use my Brow Wiz from Anastasia, Anastasia Beverly Hills. Not that this is my favorite pencil. I mean, it's the only brow product pencil-wise that I buy just because the color is so spot on. Um, I have no problem with using other pencils as long as they're this thin. That's another thing. I like the thinness of this pencil. Um, see, because I'm bound to mess up like I just did. Um, but I like the thinness of this pencil and the color is perfect for me because it's very gray. It has no red in it whatsoever and it's like a grayish, blackish brown. So it, you know, even though my hair is lighter now, I still like a dark brow. Always have. And I've always loved the look of a blonde with dark eyebrows and like black roots coming in. I think it looks great, but not everyone does. Um, I've bleached my eyebrows excuse me, before. When I had blue eyebrows, I had to bleach them, and then I would bleach them out just completely, and it's a pain in the ass to die back, so I just didn't bother with it this time, and I don't mind the look of this mismatched, if you will. Um, but yeah, I'm not against any other eyebrow pencils, I just haven't found one that I really like that is this thin and has the color right, because all of them just go too light for me. I really like a dark brow pencil that matches my natural hair color, um, which is this color essentially. And then another thing that I think you can do that will just give you a polished look, but it also will take away the look of being made up, is to use a brow gel and brush your brow hairs up and through and just have some texture to them and they don't look so filled in because they look like they have, you know, that there's hair there. And then I like to brush through after I've done the brow gel with just a clean spoolie and then I'll brush that through and disperse the product even more so I have no chunkiness. Because I love the NARS Brow Gel and it's lasted me forever, but at the same time, it the brush um, gets very goopy very easily, like the method, method that they used to wipe off the product isn't as good as it could be. So I always have to go through and brush that off. But I like to do my brow gel always after I've done powder, that way you're not getting any powder in your brow gel. Um, Let's see, what else could I do? I like to do, let's see, I'm just gonna take, yeah, so I'm gonna take whatever's left over, I should have done this before my brow gel, see? See, even I mess up. I just take this bronzer brush and I run it over my eyelids. And this is my secret to everyone, I tell this one in stores all the time. And if you run a little bronzer over the eyelids with a large brush, you have to do it with a big one. That way it becomes less directional and less sculpted. It just gives the eyes a bit of warmth, a little bit of shape, a little dimension, some sculpt. So now my products are basically sunken in. I want to just give a quick spritz just to finish it off. This one's pretty much empty, of course. 
And then sometimes if I really need my makeup to last, I'll go and hair dry my face really quickly afterwards. That way it'll like kind of force the liquid to dry down and it'll just strengthen the film formers or that are in whatever I've just used, which is most everything. That's just be honest with makeup now. That's how it goes. If I want to do a little thing to my lips, I will usually take, I have two favorites. One is a little bit more dramatic than the other, so I'll do my very soft everyday one. Um, Make It Forever Aqua Lip, or Aqua, uh, yeah, Aqua Lip in 1C. This is like the perfect color for me. I do it on the outside. And then I'll brush it in. I'm gonna use the other lip pencil that I use is the Hourglass uh, Panoramic in Eden. That one comes with a brush. This is a touch more gray, the Eden, so it gives me a little bit more of a dramatic sculpted look. Whereas the uh, 1C from Make It Forever just gives me a very... It just um, emphasizes my natural lip color, my natural lip line by just enhancing it a little bit more without adding a ton of color. And I'll throw a lip balm on top of that, or like NARS Dolce Vita lipstick, or um, I'm really into Hourglass, either Reflect or Ignite lip, Extreme Sheen lip glosses. So I'll actually throw one of those on. Now I'll do the Reflect, because that one's basically clear. But they feel like a lip balm, and they don't give any stickiness at all. And they also don't give a ton of color, these shades. The other ones, some of the other ones do. Um, but this is just to finish off the lip and then, and then, okay, so I think to keep this looking masculine, since again, we're, if we're stereotyping things, um, avoid doing any color on your cheeks, any color on your lips and any curling of the lashes because lashes and lips are the first things that usually define a woman and just, you know, I guess for forever now. But, um, if you keep your eyelashes straight and you don't do any blush or any like lip color, it'll, it'll keep it looking very polished, professional. Um, not that, you know, curled lashes and blush won't look professional, but if you're wanting to keep it look very, you know, very subdued, very um, gender neutral, I guess you could say, uh, there's nothing wrong with a little shape to the face, a little glow, a little bit of color, you know, flushed look to the lips that's not, I mean, we're not talking red or pink or anything like that. But this, this look overall, if you ever see me where I look really good or whatever, um, if we can just say that, this is usually what I've done is, um, this is usually the kind of steps that I'll take. And it just gives the face a finish, it polishes it off, it gives it a glow, um, and then you can either, you know, chase it with like a, a setting mist. Um, I like Caudalie Beauty Elixir actually for that. It helps to set the makeup because it's loaded with alcohol. Um, but this is essentially what my face looks like when I really take time to have it polished and professional. Now there's other days where I'll throw on a CC cream, a little brow, and a little bit of cream bronzer and that's it. But typically what I'll always do is have some type of um, foundation product or a concealer product worked in as foundation. Um, some very gentle brow as far as filling in and shaping them with a gel. And then a touch of cream bronzer or powder bronzer depending. Um, and that's basically my finished face just because I, I like a little color, I like a brow, and I like to just have my skin tone look even. But the contouring, the highlighting, the lip thing, that can all be skipped for me on a, a basis where I'm just wanting to just freshen up quickly. But that is everything. That is like my go-to, like when I want to look really good. Um, and you know, this whole thing will take me maybe 20 minutes, depending on how quick I'm you know, I want to be at it or anything like that, but yeah, so hopefully this is what you guys wanted to see. Um, I'm now ready to go do stuff, which is probably not going to happen today, um, so that's fun. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, please leave them below, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!